Well, it's been a couple days now. Things have had a chance to settle down, and I don't want to dwell on this Terrell Owens going to Buffalo thing because it really isn't that big a deal, but I cannot help but really just be inherently interested in this thing. So, I was thinking about it a little bit the last couple days. From the Buffalo side, it's really not interesting because when Terrell Owens went to Philadelphia, the discussion was, does this put them over the top as the dominant team in the NFC, and will it give them a Super Bowl appearance? And, you know, that's what people talked about, and that's what they did. When Terrell Owens went to Dallas, it was a big deal because people were talking about, does this put Dallas over the edge? Does it make them a Super Bowl contender? And it kind of did. With Buffalo, it's like, because last year, Buffalo had good players. Buffalo had talented, quality players, but they didn't win because it has nothing to do with the players. I mean, the players are not perfect, but the issue on that Buffalo Bills team wasn't talent, it was coaching, and it was experience, and bringing in Terrell, Terrell Owens doesn't make those things better. I mean, the only positive I can see coming out of that is Terrell Owens now just gets to play. He just gets to play football, and that'll be that. He doesn't have to worry about expectations or high-profile players or a high-profile city. ESPN will not be talking about him 20 times an hour because who cares about Buffalo right now. Um, that's all I can see out of this. It's just not in and of itself interesting because it's... I mean, no offense to the Bills fans. I, I have no problem with Buffalo, but from a media perspective, this... I mean, Buffalo's a small market town, a small market city, uh, haven't had success in a decade now, so what are you going to say? So from that perspective, there's not a lot to say. From the Dallas perspective, I will say we're about to learn a lot about Tony Romo because one possible angle on this that I didn't think of earlier was maybe Tony Romo just needs to be able to play without having a wide receiver that he has to be constantly thinking, if I don't get this guy the ball enough, he's going to flip out eventually. Maybe Tony Romo just needs to get rid of that and just be able to play. Just be able to throw to who's open and not have, at any level, in his mind, thinking about, oh, i got to get the ball to this guy. Maybe that's a good thing. And, you know, he's still there. I mean, he's really running out of excuses. I mean, even next year... His wide receiver core is going to be Roy Williams, <coughs> Patrick Creighton, Miles Austin, Sam Hurd, Isaiah Sandback. That's solid. I definitely call that solid. Tight ends are going to be Jason Witten and Martellus Bennett. That's maybe the best in the league in terms of tight end core. I know they didn't keep Tony Curtis, but if they end up keeping Tony Curtis, that, that's even better because Tony Curtis has actually made some plays in his career. And running backs, Barber, Jones, and Choice. That's one of the best, if not the best, in the league, probably. So, if he doesn't come out and perform next year, the excuses are out. I mean, one of the last excuses Tony Romo apologists have is, well, he just needs to be able to play with a receiver that will shut up. Or, you know, players who will not demand the ball and blow up if they don't get the ball enough. So... He got rid of that distraction, so if that's what the issue was, he needs to get better. But that's really all I'm going to say about that subject. I've probably talked about it too long, but it is interesting stuff for the most part, <coughs> even if things are not impacted that much, I don't think. There have been a lot of smaller moves going around right now. Uh, Dallas signed Igor Olshansky, which is... I like the signing because they're getting a player that is comparable to Chris Canty for like half the price. They're paying a lot less for Igor than the Giants paid for Canty. So that works out great for them because Igor is not that much worse than Chris Canty. Uh, Philadelphia signed Sean Jones to replace Brian Dawkins. 
Anthony Smith signed with Green Bay. These are all just kind of like irrelevant signings, but I do like Sean Jones. He has big shoes to fill in Philadelphia, but I like the Sean Jones signing for the most part. A couple things about Seattle, real quick. Uh, we re-signed Ray, Ray Willis to a two-year deal, which is nice because he played real well at the end of the season. Maybe he has a future at right, right tackle for us. I don't know what's going to happen with Sean Lockley right now because I like Sean, but if it's not going to work out, it's not going to work out. And Maurice Morris went to Detroit. Um, Morris did pretty much everything I could have asked from a backup running back. When he was asked to start from time to time, he was very good in that role. Uh, he took his backup carries and made, took full advantage of every one of them. So, I'll miss him, but, you know, I, I don't know if he's a 16-game starter, so it's hard to get really upset about this or anything. But he was definitely a quality backup and a borderline starter, so... I, I'll get over it. Uh, the Saint, no, excuse me, the Cardinals signed Brian McFadden out of Pittsburgh. A lot of little things floating around. Uh, I couldn't list all of them, and there's really very little to discuss with most of them. I mean, they're just like, well, whatever moves for the most part. So, I guess I'll end it there. Not, um, not a lot has been going on other than the Terrell Owens thing. I'll probably get more into draft stuff as time goes by, but for right now, that'll be it.